Good morning, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming. And uh, warm welcome to all the external guests. And walk, uh, warm welcome to the guests from Estonia. But you are not only guests, you are organizing the conference with us today. We have the University of Tartu and the University of Brno. And um, before we are speaking about the EU project, I would like that Samson Williams coming on stage. He's our keynote speaker. He gets prepared there. And well, it's my great pleasure, Samson, that you are coming to Bielefeld. It's your first time in Bielefeld. It exists. And Samson, I read your CV. It was very interesting. You are an anthropologist and a financial expert. You have a bachelor degree from Florida State University in cultural anthropo anthropology. And you have a master from the American Military University. It's a master in emergency and disaster management, which is which is more or less, well, the people are laughing, but uh, it's crisis management, it's, and it's really in academic science. You are from the, well, you are US, you are a US guy, but you are half Mexican, half US. Yeah, so you are, you are having two legs. And since last week, you are Estonian citizen. Yeah, you, you told me yesterday evening he, shout, he showed proudly the ID card from Estonia. Welcome to Europe. Yeah. Happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and you're writing, the most valuable educational asset is my common sense, which is quite nice, and pom-poms. Pom-poms are the cheerleader things, aren't they? Yes. Interesting. Well, I'm very much looking forward to have you on stage and giving us your keynote speech. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. <coughs> I am going to use this one. Uh, thank you all. It's nice to be here. Kara, thank you for introducing me, hooking me up. Is there a clicker by any chance? Yeah, because I, I prepare. I spent hours preparing a presentation, but if there's no clicker, it's okay. It's the black device on the desk. I'm gonna sit on the desk. That's a good joke. You laughed. You're German. You're not supposed to laugh. But it's okay if you don't have a clicker, because my presentation got ruined by this magazine after I'd spent hours, hours working on it. So since we don't have a clicker, it's okay. I'll just tell you about it because in America we say the show must go on. And so he's, he's, uh, he's going to find it. It's, it's okay. So it's not that big of a deal because again, my presentation, it was ruined by this magazine. I was going to talk about what is digital transformation. Thank you. And how it applies to maybe. Hold up. Ah, there it goes. We're always prepared. Um, so I'm the black guy. I'm from Texas. Uh, my mom's Mexican. She's Chicana from Los Angeles. So some days I'm actually Mexican. It just depends on where I'm at. And so we're going to talk to you guys about digital transformation because it's a really important and interesting topic. And so as I was saying, I prepared a really great presentation, but this magazine ruined it because I was thinking, hey, we're going to Germany. How am I supposed to explain what digital transformation is? Maybe we could talk about global warming. These are things that Germany is tackling and how digital transformation will play a role in that. And I'm like, oh, that would be great. And then Germany also has its own certain set of unique immigration challenges. It's a part of that, and digital transformation plays a role in that. And I was thinking, hmm, maybe the Germans want to talk about their unique immigration challenges that only they because at the end of the day, if my leader met your leader, they would be like, Merkel might say, what is digital transformation? And then they'd have a conversation about it. And my leader would say, ask Samson. 
And that's how I got to become your neighbor. I'm from a little tiny town in Waller, Texas. When I was born, there was 1,200 people in it. But in the world of digital transformation, we are literally neighbors. Me and Joyce, hi Joyce, <laughs> wave. <laughs> we actually, we're neighbors, we go to the same park because that's how digital transformation works. It is literally the shrinking of your world through technology. Now there's some other technical things and because this is Germany, we wanna give you that technical explanation of what digital transformation is. Later, they're gonna talk about big data. You're gonna talk about information analytics for our professor right here. Uh, you're going to talk about the role it plays in the power industry. And this young man right here, he's going to talk about the role that digital transformation plays in agriculture. You have a lot of really smart people who are going to talk to you about digital transformation. And part of that conversation is, what does it include? It also includes social media. So it's like, oh, that's interesting. But we're on Twitter. Who really uses Twitter? What would you ever get from Twitter nowadays? I don't know. But it's all part of digital transformation. And as businessmen and women, you need to be aware that that exists. Because if you don't know it exists, you can't adapt to it. It's actually just that simple. Because if you're a business, you need to know that your customers' brains have been reprogrammed. They're no longer thinking, I need a set of instructions. Because if you've ever given a small child one of these things, they get it. So your, brain, your customers' brains, they're being reprogrammed you might not even know it. And so I had prepared this really great presentation and this magazine ruined it. Because I was gonna get into some details about how your customers' brains had been reprogrammed, but that really isn't that interesting anymore. Because we were gonna talk about automation. Oh, that was really gonna be really great because they're building automated form tools to help with picking, to increase um, production for vegetables and fruits. And it was gonna be great because automation is key. I love getting on the tram this morning. There's not a single person in sight. It was a great experience. And then we were gonna talk about big data and the Czech, the good university from, the good people from the Czech Republic, they're gonna come and talk, tell you all about big data and how Facebook and Amazon know more about you than your own parents. How they have an algorithm that can predict if you're pregnant before you even know it. It's amazing. But that's big data. There's some scary privacy things involved in that, but don't worry about them. Because again, this magazine, it's called The Economist. It has ruined my entire presentation. The clicker not being here, it's a minor thing. We were also gonna talk about blockchain. Anyone ever heard of blockchain? One, oh, lots of people have heard about, oh, good. Well, we can skip that topic. There's really nothing to talk about blockchain. It's, not, it's really not that interesting. It, you use it to create cryptocurrencies. It's a data management storage. It's literally as exciting as Wi-Fi. Who wants me to explain how Wi-Fi works? Anybody? No takers? In five years, that's blockchain. No one's gonna care. You're just gonna know what's the password. That's it. Because it's an infrastructure tool. If I told you, hey, let's talk about Linux. Linux, Linux, it, one person. One person wants to talk about Linux. Linux runs your, your, your smartphone if you have an Apple and no one cares. That's blockchain. It's an infrastructure feature. No one thinks that these lights are amazing, that this presentation background is amazing. That's blockchain. So other people will get more in the details of it, but now just know it exists and it does some really cool stuff. But again, no one cares about Wi-Fi, no one cares about blockchain. So we get to artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence is the marrying of big data, analytics, blockchain, Wi-Fi, the whole internet of things, I'm pointing out my energy friend because that's what their business is focused on, is how um, AIs, dumb bots, smart bots, will ride these blockchain, they're called distributed ledger technology networks, to create amazing things. And so I was, oh, I was gonna kill it. But then this magazine ruined my presentation. Because I was like, David, wouldn't it be great if we could give an example of how big data, internet of things, blockchain, and artificial intelligence came together, if I could only think of a way to explain this, David. So I was talking to him and he was like, maybe you can give the example about China. And I was like, oh, that's a good example, where things are built in an automated factory, shipped on a ship that has two people on it, because it basically drives itself, reached a loading dock, a shipping yard, where machines unload it gets onto a truck, 
the pods are, the shipping containers are put on a truck going to your nearest Amazon facility, and then a drone drops it off at your house. That's how all of this comes together. That's how digital transformation works in more or less real time. So David was like, that's a bad example. Don't use the China example. So I was like, fair enough, David, we won't. So I said, instead, we'll time travel. We'll go to the year 2027 where Bitcoin is at $60,000 of Bitcoin. This is not investor advice. Where we're having conversations about universal basic income because UBI or universal basic income, when you automate that supply chain, when you reduce those millions of jobs to codes, to smart bots, to robots, I forget who's in the audience that was working on robots, but I'm going to remember you. And so these people, they're literally automating the future of your jobs out. And that's why digital transformation is sort of important to know, because Germany leads the world in automation, but not in unemployment. How do you keep that up? Why do you keep that up? That's a really good question. Be oh, and for the ladies here in the audience, Joyce, there you are. Joyce, raise your hand for us. Joyce is a real person. This applies to you more so than anyone else because Germany has the, one of the highest life expectancies in the modern day world. Joyce, you're gonna live in well into your 90s. I'm gonna be dead for decades. Men don't live that long. I don't even know why. They just don't. And so as you're thinking about this, you're thinking about digital transformation, automation, jobs, universal basic income, and women in particular, you might live long enough to think, hmm, we should have raised our hands and said something to these men. So I had developed this really great presentation. Back to this magazine, ruining my, ruining my whole presentation. Because you're going you're gonna to ask yourself, what can I do? What can Bielenfeld do to be part of digital transformation? And why? Because the real question is, why? Why do you even care? Well, I'm, I'm from, as you might have guessed, I'm from Texas. I live in Washington, DC. And there are, there are a number of reasons why we need Bill and Phil to care, why we need businesses here to be strong, because it's crazy. I was talking to my nieces and my nephews, Amelia, she's three, uh, Samson Xander, he's my nephew, he'll be uh, five months in a couple of days, and I was telling them, we need a strong Germany for a variety of reasons. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but this is how my, my niece and my nephew, and this black guy from Texas, because we're neighbors, we need a strong Germany. We need you to be at the cutting edge of digital transformation, of manufacturing production, the internet of things, blockchain, so that we can have a prosperous, benef a prosperous neighborhood, because we're neighbors. And so I was going to give you this digital transformation checklist, because you're German. You love checklists. That's what Rainier told me. And so it's like, oh, I'm going to have this checklist, and I'm going to make sure I'm competitive. I'm going to ask my students, how can, we re, re, how can we reinvent what we are doing? How can we actually go out in the world and find these strategic partnerships from the Czech Republic, from Estonia, from the other side of the ocean, so that we can remain competitive in this age of digital transformation? But I was like, eh, they don't want a checklist. Because at the end of the checklist, we were just going to challenge you to push yourselves outside of your comfort zone. I, used to, I worked at a Fannie Mae, it's a uh, finance thing, and this was my yearly assessment. After I got a job as chief of staff in the executive office, this is what my boss gave me back. I walked in, I had a bunch of stuff. I told her I had done a really good job. And she gave me this piece of paper back. And she said, go find the magic. You're too comfortable. Now she's chief of staff for global operations for a bank called Deutsche Bank. She works for our old boss, this guy named Pascal, who runs global operations for Deutsche Bank. And they're somewhere always trying to find the, where the magic is, and they're part of this organizational and digital transformation at Deutsche, because again, it's digital transformation, it always is happening. And so I was gonna conclude with my email address, telling you to find me on Twitter, and that was gonna be the end of our presentation. It was gonna be just amazing. Back to this magazine. Hopefully you guys are sort of interested. I, I actually sell subscriptions to The Economist, so if you would like a discount subscription, just let me know. Um, so I, 
I, came, I, went, I visited Rainier November 12th or 13th in Brussels. Uh, he's part of Finance Watch, uh, helping finance serve society. It's like the most un-American tagline ever. We don't believe in that. And so I went to the airport and I picked this up because I was going to read it. It has a really interesting graphic. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to read this. Endangered, America's future as a global power. I thought that oh, I should read this. This is going to be a really good thing to read. And so on the back, anyone on LinkedIn here? Yeah? Find me on LinkedIn, we'll gossip. I wrote people's names because I was going to tag them in something I wrote. And so I carried this around in my pocket for three whole weeks. I really did. I carried it around for three whole weeks. And then Professor Lin says, send me your presentation. And I said, OK, I'll do it on the plane. And that's when I actually looked at the back of it. And I was like, oh, man, I have been screwed. Digital transformation happened so long ago, it had time to go to print. I don't need a clicker. I need a time machine. Digital transformation is so old, just in case you guys think I'm, I'm American, so occasionally we have to fact check ourselves. It's on the back cover. Digital transformation is so old, Oracle already said, we can make you rich by getting rid of your humans. We can cut production costs in half because we have no human labor. Who's going to graduate in the next three to four years? Let me raise your hands a little bit higher. You're going to graduate. Come on, let's do this one more time. <laughs> OK. Oracle wants you to know that they don't, they're, they're, they're sort of past the human stage of evolution. I, I guess that's how that works. They had enough time to go to print to come up with a new business model. And Oracle, you're going to learn a little bit later about big data. That's what they do. They make things more efficient. And part of that efficiency is, let's just get rid of Samson. Let's get rid of Amelia and Xander, my niece and nephew. Let's make it difficult so that, yes, all the hands that raised, instead of hiring everyone, we only need two of you. That's digital transformation. And I thought, hmm, we're probably going to have to end on a more cheery note. And I don't know what that cheery note is. And so I just want you to think about digital transformation. Because as Rainier said, I'm a cultural anthropologist. I went to Florida State University. We play football. We accidentally teach academics on the, after the football game. Um, and then my specialty is emergency management. And so at, when I worked at Fannie Mae in 2008, they caused a little emergency. And so they hired me to, for 90 days. And I stayed for eight years, because they had a longer emergency than they thought. And so the new emergency are the new crisis, the new thing that's developing. It's called progress. Progress in the form of digital transformation. Because digital transformation, it doesn't actually have an endpoint. It's not like we get to Wednesday, and that's it. It's smart AIs. It's dumb bots, then smart AIs, then the Internet of Things, then something called quantum computer, Tangle Theory. Smart people in this room are going to go work for Oracle. And they're going to say, hey, we're just going to hire some AIs in the graduating class of 2018, 2020. We don't need them anymore because we're already making tons of money. Let's make even more money by having to share it with less people. And so the question is, what can Bielenfeld and what can you guys do to position your companies? Because at the end of the day, it's about your business's resiliency. You need your business to be in business. And if you're not thinking globally, if you're not thinking digital transformation, where are you going to be, not when me and David Hasselhoff are in 2027, right? Where are you going to be in three years? Where are you going to be in five years? Because digital transformation, I'd say it happens at the speed of business. And so I met Professor Linz in Athens, because Athens, Greece, is also your neighbor, which is why I happen to be here. And I'm going to conclude before we go to the Q&A. And oh, on behalf of Joyce, she really wants you to ask a question. Um, right, Joyce? She's nodding her head. I'm going to end to let you know that digital transformation we're not getting a Tuesday, and it's not going to stop. It's going to continue. So think, what can we do to make there be, I know this sounds crazy, 
that your neighbor from Waller, Texas is asking you this, but I need Germany to be a strong Germany. I need Bielenfeld to be a strong Bielenfeld. So now I'm gonna take your questions. <laughs>